Hello, I'm Greg Gilles, the editor of Unquote, and I'm here today at the IPEM conference in Cannes. It is my pleasure to have with me Nino Tranchetti Provera from Ambianta, uh, and we're going to talk all things sustainability and what are the opportunities that you see in the market at the moment, and we're really looking forward looking to Looking forward to that. Uh, but first of all, to introduce yourself uh, a bit more to our viewers, can you tell us a bit more about what Ambi Ambianta does and the, the history behind it? Ambienta is a pan-European private equity firm uh, investing with a control attitude, so uh, growth and buyouts, uh, uh, in businesses which have an edge on sustainability, resource efficient and efficiency and pollution control, which means that we are sector agnostic. Uh, it's a theme for us. Uh, we, uh, our first fund was a 200 million fund uh, in 2008. Our third fund uh, uh, is uh, just started, is a 735 million euro fund. And the reason we tripled the asset, the, the, the fund size in, uh, in, cap in 10 years is, is because of uh, performance uh, coupled with sustainability. We focus on the meat market. Uh, and within the meat market focus fund, we are one of the few having uh, a research department, so knowledge management, trying to spot sustainability in every single industry, understand how sustainability is reshaping those industries. And, uh, and uh, one, num one figure I really like uh, is the fact that out of the 29 deals we have done so far, 27 have been primary deals. Okay. You know that everybody speaks about uh, Mieterstand, the family-owned uh, businesses is the holy grail of the European uh, uh, private equity, but it's very hard to unlock those businesses, and we prove that we are able to do so. Okay. And uh, what are the main trends that drive the, the investment opportunities that you see on the sustainability side? But listen, first of all, let's frame what sustainability yes. is. Uh, human population moved from 2 to 7 billion people in the last uh, 60 years, is now moving towards the 10. Uh, people say that uh, if everybody would consume at the pace of the United States, we would need more than four planets. Simply speaking, human beings are consuming too many natural resources and are producing too much pollution. Big issue for humanity, big opportunity for all these people, all these companies able to produce the same output using less input or to produce the same output producing less pollution. Couple of examples. Because, of course, this can be found in, can be found in every single industry. Take chemicals. Um, without chemicals, our life would be much shorter and much worse, but uh, needless to say, two-thirds of the chemical production is very hazardous for human health. Uh, so, for instance, uh, uh, we invested in a company called Oscar Nolte doing water-based coating for furniture because water-based chemicals are a big uh, uh, highway to sustainability. Take food. We have two big issues in food. Number one. 57% of the resources we invest into producing food never make it to our mouth, so there is a big productivity gap. Are you talking about waste or how? Uh, in, in, from agriculture to food processing to the logistics, cold chain. It's just the inefficiencies it's every a, time that add up. It's a ma so for instance, we invested in a company called Safing that makes valves that make tractors more efficient and therefore save some uh, uh, oil that is used by those tractors. The second issue in, uh, in food is the, is the healthier food. 80% of the growth of the food industry in the European, in the Western countries in the last five years is it's linked to organic healthier food. We just invested in a company called Aromata that produces natural coloring and natural flavor for food. So you have those big mega trends, and we try to invest in companies which are fueled by those mega trends. And historically, I mean, we, you've touched upon, upon performance already when you mentioned the funds that you've raised. Um, but historically, I think that there might have been a tendency by some investors, some LPs, to view it as a bit of an afterthought or think that if you're focused on that area of the market, on sustainability, you won't necessarily have the returns that you know, more traditional PE models would offer them. Is that something that you still have to address? But you have been very diplomatic because historically there has been a massive disruption of value and therefore money into the green, into the green investing. In a nutshell, at Ambienta so far, 
we delivered uh, north of 20% IRR, our last exit was at 10.1 times X. So we definitely are top the side in terms of performance. So people often ask us, what do you do differently? Number one, most people link the concept of sustainability to energy and climate change, mm -hmm. a few subsectors, renewable, electric cars, very often linked to subsidy. We don't invest in businesses that rely on subsidy. Uh, what I tried to explain to you before, it's a mega industrial competitive mega trend. It's a completely different thing. Number two, most people invested in new tech. At Ambienta, we simply invest in normal companies which have an edge in sustainability and we help these companies to scale internationally mm -hmm. by applying what a private equity has been, the good private equity has been doing in the last uh, 50 years. Mm -hmm. You install a level of sophistication management into these companies mm -hmm. and once that is there, you grow, you accelerate the growth. Our company's booked revenue is in 104 countries last year. They grew by 11% their revenues in 2018 and by 19% their ABTDA. So this is real companies and real growth. And it's resonates. not uh, hoping that you know saving the planet you will make some money eventually. And that resonates with investors obviously because fundraising has been good. And that's uh, that. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. And, you know, it's a pleasure having you with us today. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. Ciao. Thank you.